<laughs> I swear we're actually going to get music one of these days. Nah. Hey, old Bard Kateers, Andy here. Um, so I just turned 40, uh, which means midlife crisis. Instead of running out and buying a Tesla, uh, because I'm broke, I don't have the money to do that, uh, I've decided to start collecting retro games for a couple of systems. Um, particularly, I'm going to focus on 16-bit. Um, so, obviously, I grew up with uh, Genesis and Super Nintendo and all that jazz. So, I, I really want to start collecting TG16, uh, but the prices are kind of wonky right now. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with the Nintendo Super Famicom. Yes, Super Famicom, not Super Nintendo. So I, I went to Japan. This is a brand new in-box Super Famicom. My first retro purchase uh, of this type. Uh, I picked up a few game cards here and there and done the Retron 5, but I really wanted to get the actual um, Super Famicom experience. So <clears throat> I wanted to share two Bard's first ever unboxing with you. Uh, so I, I will say that I have already removed the, the tape just to um, make 100% certain that everything was in the box uh, before I started this. So it is not a unsealing, it's just an unboxing. So without further ado, you can see that uh, th that the Super Famicom used um, polystyrene uh, styrofoam. So uh, not exactly the most uh, ecologically friendly packaging, but that's fine. Uh, the first thing that I want to point out is, on the box, we were spoiled in the U.S. Um, when the Super Nintendo came out, we got Super Mario World, two controllers, um, the RF switcher, and the AC adapter. In Japan, as you can see right here, uh, well, if you can read that, I'll try and zoom in on that. Uh, the, 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 the console doesn't come with AC, uh, an AC adapter, or a video cable, so that's kind of interesting. So, what do we get in the box? Pretty bare bones. Um, we get a notification uh, of uh, basically use this, this AC adapter, the model HVC002, and don't wrap the cable around it like we all wrap the cable around it. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, I, I literally don't know anybody who didn't do that. Um, so we have that notification. We get a uh, color instruction book. Well, I mean, it, it uses color. It's not like full color, like a um, like a Japanese uh, game manual or anything. Uh, <laughs> what's interesting is um, Nintendo has included about uh, 55 hajillion different configurations for things like uh, VCRs or VTRs, um, connection to a special port designed just for uh, the console, the video out on the console, an RGB connector. I bet that looks great, actually. Um, so, and it's all in Japanese. Uh, it's got an actual stamp on the back, so that's kind of cool. Uh, like it went through customs. <coughs> Next, we get the console and two controllers. And I mean, this is it. It's There's nothing else. Um, so we'll start with the console. I personally love the design of the Super Famicom. I think it is a hundred times better than the boxy purple and white or purple and gray um, Super Nintendo we got. So console is pretty straightforward, on off, an eject button, a reset button, uh, a, a door that locks to prevent you from um, getting dust and dirt and sticking your finger in here like I'm trying to do. So that's pretty cool. Uh, did I turn the power? I turned the power on, that's why it's locked. Uh, there's a mechanism in here. The front of Super Famicom games have a divot, and that divot uh, locks the game in so you can't pull it out of the console. Super Nintendo players, I remember very distinctly yanking my games out of the Super Nintendo in frustration sometimes, Battletoads. And uh, I guess Battletoads wasn't the... Anyway, lots of frustration. Um, this prevents that while the, while the console is running. Uh, also, Internally, you won't you wouldn't be able to fit a Super Nintendo game in here, I don't think. But this is missing the two pegs that prevent you from putting a Super Famicom game into a Super Nintendo. So, 
yeah, it's a really sleek console, two controller ports on the front. Uh, on the back, this is where it gets interesting. So there's RF out. For those of you who have played classic games or, or played them when they were classics, uh, RF is the little converter box that screws into the coaxial or into the, the devil's pitchfork. <laughs> Thanks, James. Uh, the devil's pitchfork uh, connectors for, for uh, your TV. Um, th this, uh, the, the Super Nintendo, I believe, I could be wrong on this, it's been a long time, also had composite video out. This does not, um, natively. So you just have the RF port, uh, channel one, channel two in Japan. Now Japan also uses NTSC, um, so similar um, broadcasting, spec, color space, refresh rate, all that jazz. But channel one, channel two in America, channel three, channel four. The DCN, <coughs> and then this multi-out. Uh, so this multi-out, I was really worried this being an old console, that I wouldn't be able to find an actual cable for this for any reasonable price. And then I found out that you can use the N64 cable. <laughs> and I happen to have an N64 uh, that my brother gave me um, just for funsies. So I have this cable. The N64 itself doesn't work. It, uh, it resets constantly. So if you are in the Seattle area and would like a free N64 and are willing to fix it, hit me up. Um, you can do Andy at twobards.com or uh, just hit me up through Facebook if you know me. Um, so yeah, this fits perfectly. So I'm excited to try that. Uh, I need to track down the AC adapter though. So. so there's the console. And then we get our two Super Famicom controllers. And if you know me, you know that I consider the Super Nintendo slash Super Famicom controller the best controller ever for its time. Um, followed by the Xbox 360 controller. Uh, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, those are close runners up, but the Super Nintendo controller still to me is the king. Uh, this was the controller that got us out of the three button um, hell we were in. Two to three buttons were all that you had before. And games like Street Fighter, of course, you wanted all six buttons that you'd get in the arcade. So this controller brought that. <coughs> left and right shoulders, uh, the four now iconic colored uh, buttons, the, the familiar shape that fits in your hand, uh, notice the lack of motion controls, uh, straps, um, gigantic neon balls. This is, a, this is control. This is, how, this is how a video game, to me, uh, wants to be controlled. Um, we'll see how PlayStation VR and uh, Oculus and everything changed that. But so two of those, and that's it. Uh, again, very, very minimalist uh, console, minimal, minimalist packaging. Um, I'm going to look to see if I have an AC adapter uh, around the house today. If I don't, I'm just going to order it. They're ch super cheap, under like sub $10. Uh, so I'll order one off of Amazon and hopefully stream some games soon. Um, so, you know. Check back on that. TwoBards.tv is where we'll be streaming if we do. And uh, as always, Neil deGrasse Tyson, if you're watching, which you're not, come on the show. It'd be kind of cool.